Greetings, I'm Bobby W6IWN. Well, Baofeng has done it again. Welcome to the new Baofeng Mini. We're about to find out if size matters. I'm probably not the person to ask that, but we're gonna do some comparisons. This is the Baofeng UV25R, which I believe is the largest ham HT on the market. Now we have the Mini, which I believe is the smallest HT on the market. And this is available in uh, GMRS and ham as well. We're gonna do some comparisons. This is the original UV5R. We're gonna put them side by side up close on the bench and we'll take a closer look. These are all some of the bow fangs in the lineup. We'll take a closer look at those two side by side with this. It actually has some pretty cool features. It looks like they did completely redo the UI. It does have a color screen, but most important it has Bluetooth and Bluetooth programming via your phone. It, from what they're saying, it does work with Apple and Android. So very cool feature. It sounds kind of like the TID radio, but it's looking a lot better than the TD3 so far. All right, let's jump to the bench. We're gonna do some power testing on this. I'm gonna show you this new UI and these menus up close, so stand by. Okay, let's take a closer look at some of these Baofengs side by side. And for a size comparison, I threw in this Bic lighter here so you can see really how small that mini is. So first off, let's do it side by side with the UV5R. Okay, let's take a closer look to this compared to the original UV5R. This is actually a BF F8 HP, but it's they're all the same cases. I would turn this on to show you the screen. However, the battery's dead and I got rid of all of the docks for this because I use USB-C for everything. It's more user friendly. So I currently do not have a charge in this original bow thing. However, this does have USB-C and it is fully charged. So I do like that. That's one feature already that this has that this doesn't. The screen is much better. If you've ever used a screen on these, you know what I'm talking about. You can see here, there's this new color screen. The menus are way better on this one. It has Bluetooth and Bluetooth programming from your phone. As far as I know, there is no Bluetooth audio. That's just for the programming with the app, as I know for right now. So yeah, I'm really liking this new mini compared to the older one. If you compare them side by side for the size, it looks like the Mini is a little bit shorter than the original one. And then for the width that way, it looks like the Mini is definitely a little smaller. And if we're gonna do the thickness of these, I'm gonna say it's pretty darn close. I'd have to put a caliper to, to check it that way, but it's, uh, it's pretty close. But the Mini is definitely a lot smaller I like this new eye and the screens are much better on it. So let's take a closer look at some of these other bow fangs, just for a size comparison on here. So another thing the Mini does offer that this UV5R doesn't is the air band, which some of these new Bauer fangs do offer. It still does offer the five watts, which we're gonna test here in just a minute. Uh, five watts high power, two watts low power. So uh, same thing as the original Baofeng, basically. Uh, these are all pretty much the same. This has 999 channels as well. These only have, I think, 199. Uh, I believe these are both the 999 channels. Um, I don't really like the screen on the UV25R. So let's take a closer look at that. I have used it out in the field. It may look great here on camera, but if you go to the me the menus, if you can see how it says squelch and everything in red, you cannot read that in the sun. It is impossible to read in the sun. I had the hardest time in the field with that radio, trying to read the menus in the sun. It's just terrible. This one so far has been looking better. I did test it outside and it's much easier to read. We'll get into the menus much closer. Uh, this thing is massive compared to it. This will last forever and this does have the 10 to 11 watts as advertised. So uh, these also have the air band. So this one is getting pretty outdated. I'm not sure where they're still going with the UV model. Maybe they're just trying to hang on to that because people are, it's so popular, but this is the nicest Baofeng I have seen to date so far. Okay, let's take a look at this new UI and some of the menus. 
So they clean it up and they kind of put stuff in groups rather than just one clump. I do like that. So if you need your scan functions, they're under that sub menu. If you need your radio settings, they're under that sub menu. So you have everything for your radio settings under there, which makes it a lot easier to then just diving through all the menus. If you need to program a channel, all the stuff you need for that is under that sub menu. So I really do like the UI. It's a lot clearer than the other ones. So I, I'm digging that so far. Uh, looks like this is set up for your Bluetooth. You have your radio information here. So these do have firmware on it. And I'm assuming these will come out with updates. This looks like it is version 0 0.027 on hardware version 1. And that's about it for the menus. I, I do like that in the new UI. It's a lot cleaner feeling. I like the backlighting on these buttons here. These The numbers light up a lot. The blue light. There's a blue LED. I'm not really seeing it on the camera like I'm seeing it in uh, life. But you know any of those blue LEDs on devices, it's really bright here on the center button. So that's pretty nice. Okay, I happen to have another Baofeng Mini, so let's test out the transmit and receive and see how this thing sounds. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the other room and give it a test. W6IWN, testing Baofeng Mini. Whiskey 6 India, Whiskey November, testing the audio on the Baofeng Mini. Audio and transmit test. Baofeng Mini, W6IWN clear. W6IWN testing 123 Baofeng Mini test. Whiskey 6 India Whiskey November testing transmit and receive on Baofeng Mini. All right, I have my SWR power meter here. I have a dummy load, and then let's confirm that this is on high power. If you go to program channel for this one, and then transmit power. And as you can see there, it is set to high power for the test. So I'm gonna kind of spread this equipment out uh, a little bit more for the test, but I'm gonna zoom in here on the meter. Okay, first we'll test two meters. And like I said, it's got the two PTT, so I'm just gonna hit the A button up here. And it looks like we're getting about 378, 3.8 3 watts, uh, according to my meter. Let's go to 70 centimeters. I'm gonna go ahead and press this B button down on the bottom. And we are transmitting, it looks like, about 375, 378-ish. So about four watts I'm showing on my meters on the power tests, uh, which is actually pretty typical on these radios. A lot of them say they're five to 10 watts and they're really not. So I'm showing four watts, that should be fine for an HT. If you are interested in the spectral purity of this new Baofeng Mini, uh, rumors are it has been testing in pretty good. So rather than regurgitate what a lot of other YouTubers have already done, I recommend you go up here and you check out the Smoking Apes video on it. He's got a very detailed video with a ton of information. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber to his channel. Okay, let's see how well this QR code works to get us to the app to program this thing from the Bluetooth. So what I'm doing is I'm turning my phone onto camera mode so it can scan this QR code. Okay, it does give me a Play Store link. I'm going to go ahead and install that app. Okay, so it's going to pop you to this screen at first kind of give you some intros. If you just scroll over to the right, it will say get started. Go ahead and click get started. 
and then you're going to have to agree to all of their stuff. Unfortunately, this does make you register. So if you click register a new user, you can go ahead and set up an account. I recommend using an email for a spam account. That's what I did because I don't think you should have to register to do this. So let me go ahead and sign in. I'm just blocking out my username and password. You want to go ahead and click log in. And then it's going to pop you to this screen called trends. Just go ahead and ignore that. If you want to go over to devices on here on the left, then you want to click add device. Okay, now make sure that your radio is powered on. And if you go to menu, wireless CPS, which stands for computer programming software, make sure that is turned on. That is your Bluetooth. Okay, once you're ensured that's on, go ahead and click add device. Let it uh, allow. All right, see how it says connect device, walkie talkie down here. Go ahead and select connect. You're going to have to select your model. Be careful because I accidentally selected the UV 5G Mini. That will not work for the programming. Make sure you select the appropriate model. This is the 5R Mini I'm using. All right, once again, it's going to give you some warnings and then just go ahead and click pair and connect. You'll notice up here it says connected and it shows your device. You want to click on the walkie talkie. If you click over here, it's going to ask you if you want to connect or disconnect. You want to click on the radio itself. That's going to pop up this screen. There's only one option you can use on here and it's the top one that's not grayed out. It says read and write frequency. Go ahead and click that. If you notice the radio light starts blinking red because it's transmitting the Bluetooth. Just like it would do with your chirp on your computer with a cable, it's sending the information from the radio to the device, which is my Android phone in this case. So that will take a moment to complete. Once that is complete, say loaded successfully, and then it will pop up this list here of all of your channels and all, and all the information. If you wanna go ahead and click modify configuration, this is going to bust open your channel list. This is their pre-programmed channel list. So let's go ahead and modify a channel. If you see up here in the information, there's this settings thing. If you click on that, that's going to give you all the information. Let's go ahead and name this channel. This is my local repeater. We call it Pvine. I'm going to go ahead and name it Pvine. And then I'm going to enter the frequencies here. It's got 2100 for the receive. and then plus six, so that would be 8,100 on the transmit. This one has a CTS tone of 100, I believe. Let's see if I can remember all of this. Confirm, uh, transmit power high bandwidth. Okay, it looks like everything's set up. So if you click the X here on the bottom and then right to radio, you have to go through one or more of their agreements for liability stuff. Once that's done with the countdown, click agree. Notice it says writing. Now the radio is blinking green. So it's sending the information from your CPS on your device, your Android in this case, to the radio. And then that will take a moment. Once it's all done, it will say frequency written successfully. And then you notice the radio rebooted. And then what do we got here? Very nice, let's zoom in here a little bit. So if you notice on the top here, it says Pvine. So it should have programmed that channel. Let's go ahead and give it a test. W6IWN testing new radio. Can I get a radio check, please? Oh, very nice. So the, the repeater came back, that's a good sign. We'll see if anyone answers me. But I believe it's programmed fine if I keyed up the repeater. Maybe no one's around right now. Okay, you saw it in real time from downloading the app to getting the Bluetooth hooked up between the app, programming the channel, and testing out on the repeater. I did all that in like less than three minutes or so. So very nice. I do like this app and how it, it works with programming the radio. Very nice. All right, let's take a look what's in the box. Because I'm not going to lie, it actually kind of surprised me. So if you see the size of my hand, how small this box is. So I was like, okay, this is a box with one radio in it. Well, 
there's actually not one, but two. There's two radios in there. That really actually threw me for a loop. I was not expecting that. So very cool. And I bet you can guess what else there's two of. There's two of everything else. You get this new nifty lanyard. It looks like this one can go on your neck. Does it have a breakaway? I don't know. If you want to actually wear your bow fang around your neck, you can do that now. So very interesting. So you get the two lanyards, the USB-C cable. Everybody should have a charger block for your phone, right? So you should be able to charge this. You get two of the belt clips and of course two of those power cables uh, two antennas not two but you get one manual uh, looks like there's some qr codes right here on the outside interesting that's to get the app for this uh, it is all in english the one i, I received so your uh, typical Baofeng manual Everything is in super fine print where you need readers, at least I do, to, to actually read anything in there, but it does come with the manual, interesting. Uh, I do like how it has the QR codes for the app. I like that a lot. That's what's in the box. If the Baofeng UV5R Mini is something you're interested in, Radio Oddity, the time of the recording of this video, has an early bird bundle, they're calling it, where you can pick up a two pack, just like everything I showed you in the box. It also comes with a programming cable if you wanted to program it from your computer. And it looks like they're throwing in a $5 gift card good for Radio Oddities website. I will post links below in the video description. Uh, thank you for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. 7-3.